Hi, I'm Gary, a co-founder and chief scientist at Awake, uh, now Arista. I've been an investigator in some pretty notorious breaches. I uh, had the opportunity to uh, have hands on the keyboard during Operation Aurora, during the 2008 presidential campaign compromises, um, quite a few other cases that were never publicly disclosed. It, and even I never imagined a breach of this magnitude uh, and this successful. You know, now we're also going to have to contend with hackers around the world who are going to learn from this and take a page out of the Russians' playbook. I understand why some people get upset when vendors use their channels to talk about their technologies and their products and how it would have addressed this uh, issue, calling that ambulance chasing type behavior and things like that. But to the contrary, I think that we need vendors to stand up now more than ever. I think people need to hold these tools and technologies accountable for addressing issues like this. Uh, I think we need vendors to be more vocal than they've ever been before. And I think that we as an industry need to be measuring those responses carefully. Because, you know, look, right now, we have people coming out talking about IOCs and, and domains and IP addresses. And we're talking about detecting some of the most sophisticated threats out there using detection techniques that are exponentially less effective literally every day that passes. 20 plus year old techniques for identifying threats like this. You know, when we're talking about supply chain compromises, we're talking about software that's brought into the enterprise legitimately brought into the enterprise by the IT department, deployed by IT, but behaves differently. And so we really do need to be talking about how we're detecting threats like that and get past and evolve you know, using domains and IP addresses uh, as, uh, and, uh, and passing that information around as if that's an effective means for, for detecting threats. You know, another method, and I think a, a better evolution is to, let's look at the lowest common denominator behaviors of threats, right? So you have a supply chain compromise. You have exactly what, what happened with SolarWinds, where a software platform comes in, and in certain instances, a backdoor is is activated or the software may have a trojan or some other type of, of behavior you know uh, behavior or threat to it so what do we have in those cases right you have a system software or a system that's in the enterprise that now begins to communicate with a destination uh, re recurrently or with you know some level of persistence that very few other systems in the organization are doing so that's an example of a very low common denominator pattern in behavior. Now, that pattern alone is probably not enough to uh, detect threats accurately over time. That'll certainly eliminate false negatives. You know, logic like that will detect almost all types of backdoors, whether it was supply chain or malware or spitter phishing or, or, or anything else. However, to do this accurately, we also need to analyze what we can think of as corroborating evidence, right? So uh, can we explain that behavior in the enterprise? We see this pattern, but is this uh, intended or justified in the enterprise? Let me give you an example of that. So here, uh, I'm going to bring up and show you uh, what we call a situation in Awake which is uh, sort of one of the highest levels uh, in terms of abstract reporting in the system. We are a full packet capture system, so we have all the traffic and you can get down and do, do analysis of traffic. But lots of uh, machine learning has been added to the system to automate analysis for us. And so that's what we see here. We see that a C2 was detected, the C2 model triggered, meaning that there was a device that was somewhat recurrently communicating with a destination that was relatively rare for the organization. Uh, the follow-up analysis uh, engines that are looking for that corroborating evidence to try to support the legitimacy of this uh, in the enterprise was just not able to establish this as being legitimate, so it triggered the C2 model. Then further analytics ran and, and found that before this occurred, this device actually started bouncing between these servers uh, for the very first time, and not only was it for the first time, but uh, we could not, the system could not establish the legitimacy of these or explain the legitimacy of these either. This is where we ultimately get the redirects, uh, the exploit, and then the download of the malware. Then uh, 
C2 uh, continues, and ultimately the system identifies another device in the network that's behaving similarly. Uh, that one started right around the time it was uh, interacting with email, so it looks like, to, like this could have been a spear phishing cam campaign. And then after that, the device starts communicating with new servers uh, for the follow-up C2 activity. Now, the interesting thing about this, and really the important thing about this, is that logic I just described, what I just showed you, is identical to how you would go about identifying very sophisticated nation state supply chain compromises as well. And so you see hopefully the importance here of focusing the conversation on identifying threats without requiring a priori knowledge about that threat. Lots of presentations have been given. I've been stunned at how almost every single one of them focus on using tools to identify domains and IP addresses and, and intelligence that's required to know in advance to go find that in the first place. So let's get a technical and transparent conversation going in industry so we can really evolve and get past our decades old approaches to detecting threats that are thinking years ahead of the rest of the industry. Of course, if you have any more questions about how we do this, I love getting into the, to the technical bits and bytes, uh, looking at data and, and dissecting algorithms as well. Please contact us. Thank you for your time.